So this truck's pretty dirty, and honestly, it stays kind of dirty, but don't pay attention to that. What I want you to focus on is how rust-free the frame is on this truck. If we get up under here and look at the spring hangers and mounts all the way down the frame here. And again, it's a dirty truck, but I mean, there's a little bit of surface rust on some of these welds, but you're gonna see that on just about any truck. Cross members, almost no rust on them. And this thing has spent five years and 100,000 in the rust belt, the salt belt of the country. Look at this front cross member up here. Now the front of the truck is where the road salt is gonna blast it first, right? You see a little bit of surface rust on the A-arms, but it's not bad cross member looks good so I mean I'm just really impressed you know if you look at like the up here in the rocker panels there's like no rust at all in the rockers you go back here and look at the cab corners now this is the part right here that's really bad on the f-150 trucks before they did the aluminum body is the cab corners up in here look at that it looks brand new almost Come around here and look at the rear. I mean, to me, it just looks really good. Now to some of you guys who live out in like the desert Southwest, it might look pretty rough to you guys. But over here in the salt belt, this is pretty awesome. I'm very impressed with this. frame looks awesome on this thing this light that we're using kind of makes it look like it's rusty but it's really not it's just dirty not bad for a hundred thousand miles hey there guys so this is a video that i've been waiting for quite a while to do and i've decided to go ahead and shoot this video uh, I've been wanting to talk about this truck as it sits at really six years and 100,000 miles. So getting ready to turn 100,000 miles on the odometer on this truck. And like I said, this truck was actually built six years ago, a little over six years ago now. Um, so it's got you know a good amount of age on it. And I just wanted to kind of talk about how this truck compares to the other domestic brands of trucks that I've had at this same uh, age basically. Uh, so everybody knows that the Toyota brand is uh, synonymous with reliability and dependability, right? I mean, when people think Toyota, generally they think that these trucks last a lot longer and hold up a lot better than your other brands. And uh, I don't know how true that really is. I've seen a whole lot of issues with Toyota vehicles over the years. And we all know that they have a lot of recalls that have been issued over the last decade on their vehicles. And if you look at the new 2022 Tundras that are out now, they are riddled with problems uh, as far as the design and body panel fitment, electronic issues, turbo issues, on and on and on. So I'm not necessarily one of these people who feels like Toyota builds vehicles that are bulletproof and never have problems. But having said that, this truck has really impressed me. Um, you know, at six years and 100,000 miles, I'm seeing things with this truck already that quite frankly, I just didn't see with my Ford trucks or my Chevrolet trucks or even the Ram trucks, as bad as I hate to admit it. So let's just kind of take a look at this truck and uh, I'll show you a few, a few things that have really impressed me. So first of all, let's talk about the body. Now, I live in Kentucky. This is sort of the salt belt, if you want to call it that, you know, through the Ohio Valley and up into the Midwest, uh, excuse me, uh, up into New England, you know, from the Midwest up into New England, you have this belt where in the wintertime we get a lot of snow, a lot of ice. They put a lot of chemicals on the roads. And to be honest with you, the uh, calcium chloride and salt and magnesium and all that crap they put on the roads will eat a truck alive. So usually when you get to six years and 100,000, you'll see signs of that on a pickup truck. Uh, you know, the Ford trucks, up until they changed to the aluminum body, 
which kind of makes me wonder if maybe that was one of the reasons they changed the aluminum body. But anyway, if you look at a pre-2015 model year Ford truck, what you'll typically see is that the rocker panels are completely eaten up, lots of rust in there, lots of times you even see holes in them. You know, the cab corners down here are really bad about rusting out. Uh, the Ram trucks are really bad about rusting out along the upper part of the rear wheel well here, the wheel arches, lots of rust in the bed. Sometimes they will also get rust in the bottoms of the doors. You know, the frames are pretty notorious for getting a lot of rust in them. Uh, so the, the frame and the bodies just don't seem to hold up, you know, for a long period of time. You know, the first three or four years, you know, you're usually pretty good. But once you get to this age, um, this kind of climate that we live in will just destroy a truck. And this one, as uh, I've kind of showed you, and we'll show you some more video of that, it's not really seeing that. I mean, when I bought this truck, I looked up underneath of it. I checked out the cab corners, the rocker panels, the bottom of the door, the lips of the, of the bed back there, uh, the frame, uh, cross members, suspension parts. You know, I got up under the truck and looked at it really closely and there's just not much, if any, rust in this truck. It's dirty right now. Out here where I live, it's hard to keep anything clean. But in the wintertime, I do wash my trucks on a fairly regular basis and try to, you know, do the best I can to keep the salt off of them. Uh, but this truck is just holding up really well. And it's kind of interesting to me because, you know, Toyota trucks had a lot of rust issues for a lot of years. We've seen the uh, Tacomas that folded up like a lawn chair. Uh, they ended up doing a buyback program. They would buy those trucks back from customers. Uh, we've seen a lot of rust and corrosion issues with older Tundra trucks. So I, I'm guessing that somewhere along the line, 2014, 15, somewhere in that ballpark, probably when they redesigned the Tundra, uh, it seems like they took a really concerted effort toward eliminating the corrosion problems. You know, they do a great job of dipping the frames, dipping the body panels. You know, the paint is really great on these. If you modify this truck, you know, and start changing it, you know, and cutting on it, you may introduce some problems on your own. Uh, but this is relatively stock here, and it's really doing a good job of holding up. I'm very impressed with the body, the frame, the suspension, uh, holding up great in this weather. So uh, that's a major plus to this truck and uh, very pleasant to see that. So now uh, let's kind of go inside and kind of look at the interior. Uh, the interior on this truck is holding up really well too. So I'm going to take you inside now and we'll take a look at that. All right, so first of all, let's talk about the seats. Now this truck, as you guys know, has had Carhartt seat covers on it from day one. The original purchaser of this truck bought these seat covers and he said he put them on the day he got the truck home. They've had it, uh, the truck's had these on here ever since and I've left them on there as well. So you would expect that the fabric looks brand spanking new at six years and 100,000 miles. They look like brand new seats. Uh, but more importantly, I just wanna talk about the cushioning here. You know, even though they've got seat covers on there, the cushion could still potentially break down and this one is showing a little bit of sign that it's breaking down, but there's still a lot of bolster there and a lot of protection here for your, uh, your hip. And what you'll see on a lot of Ram and Ford trucks uh, is that this area of the seat will break down over time. Usually by the time they get to this age, they've already broken down and there's like not hardly any cushioning. I mean, it'll look like this. There won't be much support left in the foam at all. So I am pleased with how these seats have held up. Uh, the material seems to be really great. Obviously they're protected from stains and everything by the seat covers, but I'm just talking about the structural material of the seat seems to be really great. You know, uh, over here on the door panels, all the materials are holding up pretty well. This is actually a somewhat soft touch material here and it's holding up pretty well. Uh, as far as the fit and finish goes, it's very much up to par. I mean, it doesn't look any worse as far as things are put together than other brands and it's holding up really well. You know, the buttons and switch gear holding up really well. The uh, icons, you know, the, the screen printed uh, emblems are holding up well. Uh, even over here on the steering wheel, that's something else you'll see on a lot of other brands of trucks is that the, the actual printed uh, um, images, symbols on here will start to wear away after a while. 
And as you can see, that's not really the case here with this Toyota. It still looks brand new. It looks like it did on day one. You know, all the dash and everything holding up great. None of the buttons have come off. None of the switches and dials have come loose. Everything still works well. The air conditioning works well. It blows really cold. The heat blows hot uh, in the winter time. So as far as, you know, the interior is concerned, I mean, the truck is in really great shape. It does help to take care of what you have, but you know, some trucks hold up pretty well. Some trucks don't. And this one seems to be holding up really well on the interior. It's the same kind of deal in the back. I mean, you know, everybody knows I'm not real happy with the interior in terms of features, but in terms of build quality, everything looks really good back here and it's holding up great. All the power windows still work normally. All the power door locks still work normally. I do think that this window may have had a little bit of work done on it at some point because when I bought the truck, I noticed that uh, this bolt right here was a little bit loose. So it makes me wonder if maybe somebody had had some of this apart at one point. I don't know why you would take that loose just to get the door panel off, but I'm just saying, uh, I mean, it's possible it could have come loose over time. Maybe it wasn't tightened at the factory. Not 100% sure. All I know is that everything still works completely normally. So as far as the interior build goes, I'm really happy with it. The rear sliding window works great. That's something that could potentially be an issue, but I mean, they seem to work great. Um, I noticed they didn't include that on the new truck that they redesigned for this year. Don't know why, because it's a super popular feature that everybody loves, but yeah, I mean, the interior of the truck is holding up great too. Like I said, you can see along the door panels here and uh, the door seals, rocker panels is what I was trying to say. No rust, everything looks great. Paint's holding up well. The paint's really thick in this area of the truck. Mine's really dirty, but uh, when it's clean, you can tell they've put some extra thickness into the paint down here. Got these little lip protectors here as well. So, I mean, they definitely took care to build a truck here that was going to last a long time. I mean, I have no, uh, no reason to believe this truck wouldn't go another 100,000. Yeah, I mean, I absolutely believe this truck would easily go another 100,000. You know, we're kind of to the point where most trucks will easily go 100,000 miles. The really good trucks will go two or 300,000 miles. I think that this Toyota Tundra would easily go who knows how many more miles. We've seen some of these trucks with 700,000. We've seen a couple of them with a million miles on them. Uh, so yeah, the build quality is definitely there on this generation of the Tundra. This was sort of the last uh, redesign before they went to the new 2022s. And I think this may be where the Toyota Tundra peaked in terms of build quality and just how easy they are to keep on the road long term. If you're looking for a really good Toyota Tundra pickup truck, I think this might be the generation you're after. So what about the powertrain? Well, once again, you have a powertrain here in this truck that is pretty much uh, bulletproof and all the bugs have been worked out of it. They used this powertrain for so many years that by the time you get to 2016, this thing is pretty much flawless. The iForce V8 still starts perfectly every morning, uh, purrs like a kitten, delivers great power, it tows like a champ. Uh, everybody knows the fuel economy kind of sucks. Uh, that's a major problem right now with gasoline at well over $4 a gallon. But having said all of that, this thing is pretty dependable. I don't like the fact that they still use the mechanical style fan that robs horsepower and it robs fuel economy. They use an old fashioned uh, belt driven hydraulic pump for the steering. Again, that's outdated. It robs power. It robs fuel economy. This thing could have easily been a 410 horsepower engine with better fuel economy if they would have just updated that stuff to uh, the way all other brands have been doing it for over a decade now. So they lost a, a really great opportunity there, I think, to do that. But there's been some rumors floating around that the guys at Toyota that were designing these trucks said, hey, let's just stick with it because it's proven. And I guess there's something to be said for that. You know, things that are proven and we know that they work well, that seems to be the way that Toyota rolls. They design something, they put a lot of engineering effort into it, a lot of money into it. And then they use it for many, many years because it just works. So the V8 is awesome. This one, uh, so far, knock on wood, does not have the cam tower oil leak issue. 
Uh, this one, as far as I can tell, doesn't have any issues. Transmission still shifts really well. After I changed all of the transmission fluid, it started to shift a little bit more firm again. And that could be normal. That could be the way they're supposed to be. I just know that when I bought the truck, it was getting a little bit sloshy, you know, very, uh, you couldn't really discern gear shifts. And now you can tell when it's shifting through the gears again, which I kind of like personally. Uh, so it's working great. Transfer case is still working great. So, I mean, the drive line of this truck is awesome. Uh, other than the fuel economy, uh, it's very dependable and there's definitely something to be said for that. You know, truck guys, we need to be able to get in these things and go and get the work done. You don't want to be working on these things. You don't want to have them down. Uh, even if they're under warranty, you don't want it to be down, you know, at the shop waiting for repair. You want to be able to get in day in and day out, start it up, run it, do what you need to do. And I think that they've got a really great powertrain here. And, you know, maybe the 2022s with that new powertrain, the 10-speed, the Turbo V6, maybe they will eventually get it to this point where it's bulletproof. But right now, my opinion is if you want something that's rock solid and you don't have to worry about it, again, this generation of Tundra is where it's at because this thing is awesome. Now, my Ford truck, once I got beyond 100,000, it started having issues. You know, I had to do work on the water pump. The coolant system and hoses had to put, uh, I think, a new fan belt on it. There were some things that it needed. The throttle body needed a little bit of work. You know, it wasn't anything major. wasn't anything super expensive, but it was stuff that was annoying. Uh, and I haven't seen that with this truck so far. You know, some of the Ram trucks with the 5.7 Hemi, a lot of guys uh, report that they have some issues with a valve train in those trucks when they get to high mileage. Um, some people call it the Hemi Tick. There's some other names for it, but basically the cams can wear at an ir irregular way, and it just kind of gives you some, uh, some problems later on in life with those trucks. Uh, but again, this truck doesn't seem to have any of those issues. It might be old-fashioned. It might suck gas, but it doesn't have any of those problems. So compared to the other trucks I'm used to, this thing is flawless, 10 out of 10 on the powertrain as well. And uh, then you've got the stuff that guys don't really think about a whole lot, like suspension, for example, ball joints and suspension links and things like that. And also, you know, in that regard, this truck is doing very well. You know, I recently uh, had the thing up on a rack and I checked the ball joints really well. They seem to be tight and holding up great. All of the suspension parts and pieces in here now. Uh, I did replace the shocks because I wanted a little bit of a lift up front, but the shocks that were on it were not worn out yet. They didn't give me any trouble. Uh, so I replaced those just because I wanted to. But yeah, the ball joints and everything in the suspension of this truck is still holding up great and doesn't show any signs of needing to re be replaced yet, uh, which is pretty awesome. You know, and that's, that's also something that with other brands of trucks, you'll see that this is not necessarily the case, you know. Some of the other brands, you'll have some issues at this mileage. You'll have to start replacing things like ball joints, which can be expensive and then time consuming if you try to do it at home. Uh, so I'm pretty pleased with what, the way this thing is holding up. So I guess you could say the bottom line is that I'm pretty happy with this truck in terms of build quality. I mean, it is a really good truck. Uh, the reason I kind of went with a Toyota, other than the fact that I had never had a Toyota pickup before and I wanted to give it a whirl, um, the other reason is because I've always heard that they're really good trucks and I was tired of having issues uh, with some of those other brands that I had had. The Ford was rusting out on me and the factory wouldn't do anything about it. The dealership wouldn't do anything about it. Um, you know, and I've had some other issues with other brands. We won't even get into the Chevrolet trucks that I've had. Oh my God, what a nightmare. Uh, so I just wanted to try Toyota and try something different and it's a really great truck. Unfortunately, gas mileage is a big deal. You know, at $2, at $2.50, at $3, you can just deal with it and suck it up. But we're getting to that point now where you can't really just deal with it anymore. I mean, it's costing me over $400 a month just to keep gas in this thing. And that's, that's like another payment on something. Uh, so that's the big drawback here. And it's just, you know, you go through these cycles, gas prices go up, they go down, they go, but it seems like we're going into a place in our culture now where gas is just going to be more expensive going forward and that really hurts uh the chances that this truck's going to stay around long term because it's just really eating me up financially so as great of a truck as it is it might not be here too much longer i don't know we'll see there's something to be said for dependability for sure 
uh, but there's also something to be said for not spending all of your money on gasoline. So anyway, I just wanted to point out how great this truck has been to me so far. Uh, it's really, really impressed me. So yeah, I don't think you can go wrong with these trucks. You want a dependable truck? Try one of these Toyota Tundras out. I really think that in terms of the mid 2010s, you know, 15, 16, around that time frame, if you look at all the major brands, I really truly believe, because I've experienced it, that the Toyota Tundra might be the best truck in the class. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll talk to you later.